while we learn about the opposition on the pitch, Wiser learns how to heat my home. Rob, the waiting's over. Finally, uh, you can announce some new signings and Jack Dunn and Roy Laughlin coming in are, are huge signings. De definitely. I mean, obviously, people are really aware we've lost a couple of back five forwards uh, with Johnny and, and Sam going. So we've all, we've been in the market very quickly, um, looking at second rows. Having said that, when you watch a guy like um, Daffod Jenkins coming through like he is, you know you kind of also appreciate we've got some genuine depth already here at the club. But you now Jack, as soon as I started to look at his stuff, uh, really impressed me. Obviously he's you know, he's a big guy, but he's a big guy who can move. He's a, he's a dynamic mover. He's young. He's the right age. Um, everything I saw in the clips I watched, I liked. Um, meeting him here at Sandy Park and doing his medical and everything was, was good. He has had a, a relatively significant injury in recent times, so if people have been looking for him to be playing in the last 12 months, so they won't have seen much game time, but he's back now and he's he's been starting to some get he's been playing some games off the bench for Leinster recently. So he's coming through things and I can only see an upward performance curve in him with game time and with genuine input and probably a little bit more opportunity to play than he had at Leinster, who've got um, an awful lot of very, very good second rows. Um, I think it kind of fits for both sides. We've got a slot there. Um, Jack's looking to play a bit more rugby. Um, his EQP, which obviously helps helps us and obviously creates opportunities for him here in England as well. So the package for him has, has been great. And as I say, I hope, I hope he's someone who can play a lot of rugby for us. Rory is kind of slightly, slightly different, an older guy, but with bags of experience playing right through all the levels with with Leinster, right up to, to Heineken, uh, winning Heineken Cups. That's the kind of guy we're probably looking for in our backline. Someone like can add a bit of genuine communication uh, and a bit of talk and a bit of heads up and can see space a little bit and understand where we are, you know, alongside being a, a very good rugby player. So kind of looking for different things from the two the two players. You know, we believe we've got that really well with these two guys. And obviously they've, they've got good experience. They come from a very good environment where They've obviously been a part of a you know a high performing training and playing unit as well. Um, so really, we, we think they tick a lot of boxes for us. I was going to say any players that are playing in Leinster's first team, you know they're going to be there or thereabouts in terms of quality. Aren't they? That's right. I mean, obviously we played against Leinster numerous times, and you can watch the success they have both in their domestic competition and in Europe. Um, <clears throat> and these guys have been in that environment for quite some time, and they will have learnt a lot in that. And you know, we're hopeful we can we can learn some from them and we can teach them something. And the, the combination of the two should be very successful. You talk about some of the youngsters coming through, the likes of Daff and, and even Josh Hodge to some extent. <coughs> Do you see yourself still going in the market for maybe one or two more? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean we we've got um, we've got a, a back five, another back five forward already lined up. Um, we've actually now with you know with what's happening, we've got space for probably even probably for one more. Um, backs wise, we're kind of there and thereabouts, really. You know, you know, with Josh Hodge coming through like he has, that's you know given us some real options across the back three. The form of um, Ollie Woodburn has been you know fantastic in these last three or four games. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a good player who knocks him out of the spot. We've got Jack Noel coming back from England. Flats is playing exceptionally well. You know, we've got a lot of options in the back three of the scrum, the back three of the field at the moment. Um, and I think that that gives me a real confidence that we can push through in that area, and there's not too much we need there. Obviously, kind of midfield, you know, Oli Devoto's injury is is going to take some time to clear up, but obviously Rory can help us help us cover that in the early part of next season. So we've we're, we're looking like we're starting to get a little bit more complete. Obviously, this opportunity for guys, someone like a guy like Pat Schickling, opportunity for a guy like Jack Inard, opportunity opportunities again for games guys like James Kenny. Um, Billy Keast, you know, you can actually see there's a little bit of thickness there that probably people didn't quite realise. Our biggest issue has been that they've had to go straight into Premiership games as a as a group, really, and that's that we're coming through that now and we're developing through it. But that probably is what made people not quite realise that we, you know, we have had a plan on on where we're going and, and what's happening, um, and I'm hopefully you know some of our performances and some of our results are starting to show that 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 is there and it's in place. You often say continuity is your best form of recruitment, so that you aren't going to see a huge mm. amount of, of turnaround as always. No, we don't want to. You know, we, we feel like we're a pretty good team and, and we've got a good age range. You know, we are, I don't mind saying, you know, there's a new challenge this season. You know, the, the introduction of an extra team and the in, uh, increased clashes with the uh, international calendar alongside us getting a few more guys into international recognition that we hadn't had before. You know, this, this last 12 months, you know, 
we couldn't, you know, there's no way that you can plan that, say, Sam Simmons and, and Johnny Hill are going to be away on Lions tours and then in England squads because they weren't 12 months ago, despite Simo being in there before. So all of a sudden, that's two of your back five. You know, you, you, you couldn't have necessarily planned for being away. Yes, you can hope they're away. You can hope they do well enough to be picked by England, but you can't plan for it. And then when you start a season with two or three other back five injuries, you know, you suddenly, it's a little bit of, it takes a little bit of time to just reorganise yourself and get those young guys up and running. And probably, in a lot of ways, one of the most disappointing things was probably has been the injury to, to Chris, really, because this would have been a huge opportunity for him to have got some real involvement. And yet, in the period when he could have played a lot of rugby, he's actually been injured. So there's another guy there who's probably missed out on a bit of development who would have really gained from this period. But as I said, you know, look how well Daffod's come through and... You know, you, you see kind of that, and you you know you can see there's a real there's a real depth chart there of, of back five forwards, and that to me just you know is is the kind of they're the kind of you know icing on the cake really that tops off winning a game of rugby and having some young guys on the field.